Hey guys, Jason Stallworth here and welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time, welcome to the channel. Today we are talking about the difference and we're going to hear the difference between metal riffs and progressions. What are the differences and why are they important? We're going to cover all that. Of course, I'm going to play some examples for you because, well, we just like to play some metal guitar, right? And of course, hang around till the end of the video because we're actually going to combine the two riffs and progressions together. And I think that's going to give you a better idea of how to use each one and maybe when to use them. <laughs> What makes a metal riff a riff? What is the difference between riffs and what we call progression? So riffs are more, I would say, single note patterns that you're gonna play. It doesn't mean they have to be single notes. Of course, we have some power chords within riffs. We know that. But a lot of times the riff is carrying a, a unique melody, something that's memorable to you, like Master of Puppets. You guys have heard that a gazillion times. And if I say, play the Master of Puppets riff, <laughs> That's probably the first thing that would come to mind. Or if you said, well, hey, play that killer riff in Judas Priest's Painkiller. And just for the heck of it, one more. Dawkins' Kiss of Death, love some George Lynch playing there. So in any case, I think you get the theme of what we're talking about here when it comes to a riff. If you think of any metal song that you love, you think of kind of that, that core memorable melody, if you will, right? You just remember that theme because it, it grabbed your attention, it hooked you. And when you're sitting down playing guitar like I am right now, or like we're doing together, you're probably just playing some cool riffs. Hopefully you're making up some of your own riffs, which you guys know I encourage you strongly to do that. But we can just play around with riffs all day, just single note patterns. <laughs> Really simple riff there that we're just making up on the fly here or going back to what you heard in the beginning of the video. Now let's talk about progressions. What is a progression and how is it different from a riff from the things that we just played? Well progression is more so chord based. So let's just play an example. This would be the four magical chords here in most like every hit song. So yeah, I know that was a little kind of pop rock sound in here. Let's do another type of chord progression here. Now I kind of snuck some little riffs in there by accident, sort of. Those things just kind of happen sometimes. Again, we're going to talk more about combining the two right after this, but I just want to cover the difference between the two. So progressions, again, they're more chord-based, and I deem a progression is sort of like the foundation of a song. Sure, the riff captivates you, right? That pulls you in, that, that's that memorable moment, right? It's like the coolest part of a movie. It's like the, or the parts rather in a movie that you remember. I'm thinking back, you know, at Rocky IV, one of my favorite movies of all times. But as soon as I think of Rocky IV, I immediately think of Ivan Drago, I must break you. To me, that was just a memorable moment. Now I'd have to kind of dig deeper for some of the other memories from that movie. However, without the entire movie, AKA without the progressions to fill in all the spaces and carry us along on that journey, well, it really wouldn't be much of a movie. And with a song, without the progressions to take you on that journey, they're sort of the vehicle to take you along on that journey, which that's what a song is to a lot of us. It's kind of taking us somewhere, man, in that really cool moment, right? If it's just a bunch of riffs or 
or especially the same riff over and over, it's gonna kind of wear its welcome out a little bit. You kind of become like, okay, it's a cool riff, but uh, what else is there? So that's where the progressions of the song kind of hold it and piece it together. And if you'll notice, a lot of times, the riffs, the really cool riffs, they're only snuck in there here and there, sometimes only once, maybe twice throughout an entire song. Let's go back to Master of Puppets. How often do you hear that core riff in the song, right? Only a few times. It's not throughout the entire song. In fact, let's just play the chorus. I, I think it goes like this. I had to kind of recollect here when I first learned this tune. Progression, and in my opinion, a very unique progression. Unlike the four magical chords we played earlier when we started talking about progressions, I always joke about that because you've got the minor and three majors, and however you want to arrange that doesn't matter, but that's kind of the core element of a lot of hit songs. But we're not talking about pop songs here, are we? We're talking about metal. But in any case, I believe when Metallica got together and wrote that song, I, mean, I could be wrong here, and that's okay, right? But I believe the guy said, hey, we want the chorus to really be highlighted, the vocals and the vocal melodies here and the message here. So we'll just hold out those power chords. We'll just maintain a progression here so that the vocals can be highlighted. And this is an important part of songwriting as well. Maybe you want certain elements throughout the song to be highlighted at certain times. When you want the riff to be highlighted, well, that's what you play, the riff, right? Now, sometimes you might have some vocals going over that as well, but you at least hear that riff just kind of standing out, whereas when you have some other elements, whether it be a vocal line, sometimes a, a bass solo, sometimes another guitar part, you may want just a progression holding down the fort while that other piece of music is being highlighted. Let's talk about riffs and progressions being combined together. This is where the magic really starts to happen. So the example I want to give is the riff you heard in the song earlier, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second here, but I combine both riffs and progressions in this. <laughs> So there, we just combine the little riff that I was playing. I'm in standard tuning, by the way, just the E minor based riff that I'm playing there, kind of just playing some notes around that E minor chord, right? Pretty simple for the most part. Uh, but then we go into a progression, some power chords there. Now, in its entirety, it is an actual progression. I could not play that riff, for example, and make a progression out of it, right? Like this. Something like that. I kind of sped that up a little bit just to get through it, but I could play the E minor, right, instead of the riff that I was playing, then go to that C and D, and that would have been fine too, but we've got a riff there. So this is something else to remember as well. Even if it's a single note pattern for the riff, you still have a chord per se holding that down. Usually the bass is playing something there, but that riff is still going to be based on a chord, just like this riff here is based on an E minor chord. This is where you start to combine the riffs and progressions together. So if I wanted to, I could start the song out with that riff, like you heard in the intro. I could start the song out with that riff then go to the power chord C and D, and then let's say the vocals were coming in. Maybe I don't play the riff anymore and I play just a chord instead, and that would be pretty cool, a cool change up. It's like, okay, well, that riff is gone, now I'm hearing some vocals. Then we pull the vocals out, 
and then we go back to that riff. We go back to the, the original way that we played that, so then it kind of grabs your attention once again. Now, real quick note on the chords. A lot of times you can turn power chords, or really any kind of chord, into a little riff there on its own. And one way to do that, listen to this right here. Instead of playing the C and the D, listen to what I do instead. And I've covered this in other videos, but I want to share this on this video. All I did was I just changed the second note of the power chord. Again, I've got a lot of videos on this. You could probably go to my channel and just, and just look up variations of power chords. And I've got a lot of videos that cover that. But that's a cool way not only to give your chords a, a little bit a little bit of spice, right? Just something a little different. Not that playing the regular power chords is wrong. That's not wrong at all. That's great. But if you want to just, you know, boost it a little bit, or I'm you know, kind of making a riff out of that as well, because you can hear a little melody in there as I play this C and D chord. <laughs> I could even accentuate that more. I could just dramatize that a little bit more and make it more into an actual riff by doing something like this. By the way, what we just played, the little tune I wrote at the beginning of the video, well, it was just that. I like literally just wrote it for this video. I kind of got inspired. I'm like, hey, let's do a video on riffs versus progressions, and let's talk about this a little bit. If you guys would like a lesson on that, leave a comment on this video here, and I'd be happy to make that as a YouTube lesson here as well. Uh, by the way, guys, I do have an entire riff course called Metal Riff Master. A lot of you know about it. Of course, a lot of you are in that, so thank you, by the way. But I share over 80 different metal riffs with you and kind of take you through different, a different series, a different, slightly different styles. You got some 80s metal, of course, a little bit of thrash. You've got some even ballad style riffs in there, and you've got some more complex riffs as well, some simple ones. And they're not all in the same key, by the way. We're not just playing in E minor. So it's a really great course if you want to just beef up your riffs a little bit. And that's one of the better ways to get better, not only at playing riffs, but writing your own as well, is just by learning learning some other riffs and expanding on those. So check out Metal Riff Master. I'll have a link to my course in the description of this video. I don't want to say that, that riffs are more important than progressions or progressions are more important than riffs. I think they're both equally needed. However, just make sure as you're writing riffs, make sure you're expanding on that and giving it a progression as well because that's what's going to make the complete song and this i believe is where a lot of guitar players get stuck they they get the riff down like okay well i, I don't know what to do after that well this is where thinking about the progressions can come in and i think that can simplify the process for you as well uh, so again thank you so much for hanging out with me here i enjoy these types of videos because i feel like we're just kind of hanging out in the studio here together just jamming just doing what we love to do so leave me a comment if you guys have any questions whatsoever i'll see you on the next video until next time keep it metal and keep playing music